spiritually transformative experience by Angela B from the Near Death Experience Research Foundation. In the middle of the night, I woke with a severe migraine. I'd experienced occasional migraines since I was a teenager, but this particular migraine was extremely painful and I really should have sought treatment at the emergency room. However, since I had very young children at the time, I didn't want to wake them or my husband, so I attempted to treat myself. I took my prescription migraine medication, but it did not provide any relief from the pain. Instead of waiting an hour before taking the second dose as the instructions advised, I waited 20 minutes and took the second dose. I also took two over-the-counter pills for migraines. I've always been very sensitive to medications, but at the time, I did not consider this. I was only focused on relieving this intense pain. After taking the medications, I became very sleepy and returned to bed. When I drifted off to sleep, I would awaken by gasping for breath, quickly realizing that when I drifted off to sleep, I stopped breathing. I was fearful I would fall asleep and die. Dear God, please don't let me die. I want to be a mother and a wife. I said a very simple prayer. And as I said this prayer, I doubted God would hear me. At that time in my life, I felt insignificant. I was not sure God existed, and if he did, I didn't think he would know me. But I was about to be proven wrong. Immediately after praying, I felt a presence come over my bed. I was lying on my back with my eyes closed and I could sense a shadow had been cast as something moved over my body and then stood next to my bed. As soon as I felt the presence, I was frightened and I heard a Bible verse in my mind. An angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. I realized I had received the Bible verse telepathically, and an angel had arrived to help me. It then felt as if the angel slipped his hand directly into my stomach. I felt a sensation unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. Static was moving in my stomach and throughout my torso. I also saw in my mind's eye a vision of black and white static, as if I on a TV set without reception. At the same time, I felt my deceased father's presence. I could hear him speaking into my right ear. He repeatedly said, You're going to be okay, you're going to be okay, you're going to be okay. As the angel stood to my left and my father spoke to me from my right, a very large, powerful presence hovered over the length of my body. When I noticed the large presence, my inner vision was changed to that of a crystal blue waterfall. The water was sparkling clear and the most beautiful blue I have ever seen. As I marveled at the sight of the water, the static sensation in my torso dissipated. It was then replaced with a sensation of liquid love rushing into my heart. The love was so pure and overwhelming that I immediately began to weep. The liquid love flowed through my heart and filled up my chest cavity to the point that I could not expand my lungs to inhale. I was aware of having difficulty breathing, but it did not concern me. I was so blissed out from the love that nothing else quite mattered. I had the realization of, this must be God. It was so large, infinite and powerful that I just knew it could have no other name than God. Once I realized I was in the presence of God, my next thought was, Oh no, God is going to judge me for taking too much medication. So I waited for the judgment, yet it did not come. I moved into the flow of God, searching for his judgment. There was no judgment to be found, not a speck. Only pure, adoring love was in the infinite flow of God. At this point, I lost awareness of my body. I did not recall I was a mother, wife, daughter or friend. I had no recollection of life on earth at all. I merged into an infinite presence that utterly and completely adored me. God did not speak words to me. The love just said it all. I felt as if I was in awareness, a being without a name or identity, and I was expanding to the size of the cosmos. I was home. I realized home was where I wanted to remain forever, and in my blissed out state, it took all the energy I could muster to telepathically communicate. Take me. And with these two words, I was attempting to communicate that I wanted to remain in this pure love forever. As my presence continued to expand in a state of bliss, I felt as if I was nearing a point where I would explode into a billion atoms and forever be with God. I mentally prepared myself for the explosion and gladly welcomed it. 
at the very last millisecond before the explosion of my being and my total emergence into infinity, God pulled me out of heaven and I landed with a shocking jolt into my body. I lay in my bed, dazed and confused. My hair and pillow were soaked from the tears I had cried as the love consumed my very heart and spirit. I truly have no idea how long I was with God, but when I returned to my body, it was completely healed. The medication had been removed. I was breathing normally, and I was not lethargic. My head felt normal. Usually after having migraines, my head would be very sore to the point that brushing my hair would be unbearable. Now I could push against my skull and feel no pain or soreness. I attempted to process what had just happened. I knew that I had experienced something beyond any earthly experience I'd ever had or heard of. I told myself that I would allow myself to believe I had experienced a miracle, if when I awoke in the morning I remained pain free. So eventually I fell asleep, and when I awoke in the morning, my body had no after effects of a migraine or medication. I just felt wonderful. I remember standing at the mirror brushing my hair and trying to accept all that had occurred. My best friend called me, and I told her I experienced a miracle the night before. Fortunately, she believed me, and she advised me to go to the bookstore to find a book about healing. I did as she suggested, and as I was walking into the bookstore, I realised I had no idea where to find a book that would help me. Then an image appeared in my mind. It was a poster of the cast of the TV show Touched by an Angel. I'd never watched the TV show, but I decided to go to the section of the bookstore where there were books about angels. I grabbed some books which caught my eye, and I randomly opened one of them. The first paragraph I read was about a woman who experienced a healing from an angel. She described feeling static in her body as she was being healed. I was shocked. How had I walked into the bookstore and opened a book that described exactly what I'd experienced the night before? <sighs> my mind was blown. It was too much to process. I spent the next few days reliving the experiences in my mind. After a few days, I accepted I had been touched by an angel, comforted by my earthly father in heaven, held in the infinite arms of God, and miraculously healed. From this point on, my life would never be the same again. An near-death experience by ENT. On Sunday, July 17, 2022, I was out and about with my bearded dragon lizard, Lemmy. We were walking through the drainage tunnels as a shortcut to our destination. We were resting in an open part of the wash, situated directly behind the runways of North Las Vegas Airport. I was sitting back watching the small planes take off and land, while my little buddy was sitting a few feet away sunbathing. I was taking a long-awaited drink from a water bottle as I watched a small, single-engine Cessna making a right turn in my direction, preparing to land. I watched another small plane descending behind it. At least it appeared that way from my vantage point. I expected the planes to pass directly overhead of me to land, but to my horror, I watched as the planes collide mid-air about 50 feet above me. I scrambled to my feet, grabbing Lemmy, and sprinted towards the steep driveway-like slopes of the storm drain. When I heard the deafening sound of an explosion, I was thrown forward with tremendous force while pelted by small pieces of shrapnel. I went unconscious as I hit the ground. When I regained consciousness, I saw nothing but a dark tunnel. I thought I imagined the whole incident and looked around for Lemmy, but he wasn't there. I freaked out and ran towards the end of the tunnel, being blinded by an intensely bright light. Then. I found myself in a different location. I was in a grassy, oasis type of place. This confused me as I was greeted by a strange, robed figure who led me down a path to a field. Numerous people were sitting there, and I recognised my grandmother, great-aunt, and a close family friend of mine, all of them having died when I was younger. Who are you? I asked the robed figure. And instead of getting an answer, Everyone else was asking me what I was doing there so early. I don't know, I replied. I relayed the story that there was a crash, I passed out and woke up somewhere else without Lemmy. I asked if they had seen him and demanded that I get to him. 
The robe man placed one hand on my forehead and everything became blurry and dark. I opened my eyes. This time, I found myself on the ground and in a lot of pain. As I stood up, I saw the burning wreckage of the small Cessna about 20 feet away from me. The pungent smell of burning flesh and metal was very strong. I frantically looked around for Lemmy and found him a few feet away from me. I picked him up and dialed 911. I explained the situation while cautiously inching closer to the burning wreckage. I wanted to see if anyone had managed to survive. It was so horrible that although it will forever be ingrained in my memory, some things are just better left unshared. I suffering a broken knee and a fractured wrist, while Lemmy suffered a broken forelimb and a spinal displacement. Both of us spent a day in the hospital, and the nurses were so nice to me and little Lemmy. They even made him his own little splint for his arm. In the end, we were okay. But I wish I could say the same for everyone else. The air collision resulted in four fatalities. I was met by a journalist for an interview, but I declined due to the severe aftershock of the experience. A near-death experience by Harry T. My wife travelled to Atlanta from our home in Maryland to celebrate Thanksgiving with her parents. I flew home to MD, leaving her there, to return to my job at the USCG Intelligence Coordination Center in DC. On December 8th, 2019, I finished dinner and bent over to place the dishes in the dishwasher, when I felt my chest compress and grew dizzy. Thinking I was having an asthma attack, I went to the living room, turned around to sit on the couch and passed out. I believe I died. I suddenly was aware that I was in a place surrounded by bits of light. I saw, felt and experienced myself spread eagle rotating slowly counterclockwise while the bits of light were relating my life. The bits of light closest to me were my parents, grandparent, and family who had all passed before, and connected to them farther away were close friends and connected to them were people who had influenced me and whom I had influenced, student, acquaintances, etc. And the people whom they had interacted with, but unknown to me, but connected to me by my interaction with everyone I had known and met in my life, and had gone on before. All of those bits of life were relating how my life and actions had affected theirs. A cacophony of words and stories, but each understandable and distinct at the same time. I was not feeling fearful nor distressed, but was actively engaged in hearing not so much of my ears, but my whole body and my soul. In that moment, I was not bewildered. Rather, I was accepting this as what was necessary, what I needed to do. I have no comprehension for how long I was experiencing this relation of my life. However, at one point, a brilliant flash of light, an all-encompassing light and voice bellowed, Not yet. Go back. Call 911. Whereupon all the bits of light repeated, Call 911. Over and over and over again. I next find myself half on, half off the couch in my living room. It took me a few minutes to regain control of my body enough to enable me to sit upright enough to grab up my phone on the coffee table. After a number of these attempts, I was able to get my phone, and again, with a few more attempts and with great difficulty, I managed to call 911. When I got through, I told the dispatcher I couldn't breathe and was having a severe asthma attack. The paramedics came, placed me on backboard and then a stretcher, transporting me to our local hospital. After a CT scan, the emergency room doctor placed me on heparin drip and had me flown by a helicopter to George Washington University Hospital with a saddle pulmonary embolism. I was in ICU there for four days, the first three of which I was forbidden to move, eat or talk unnecessarily for fear of dislodging the embolism. I do continue to wonder why I was sent back at all. The Shared Death Experience by Angel G this is about my wife, Vera Gonzalez, who passed on May 7th, 2016. The attending physician assistant and I witnessed a light orb leave her body within minutes of dying. A concentrated white orb light came out of her chest through the sternum, rose and hovered momentarily, and then departed the room while accelerating. I truly thought I was imagining things until the physician assistant asked me if I saw the light as well. He said he had seen it before and it was Vera's spirit. 
He also said he sensed a great deal of holiness in the room, as I did too. I'd been praying the last rites to Vera before her death. I'm Christian, but of Jewish descent, Sephardic, and the nurse practitioner is Jewish. Vera was a strong, faithful Christian. Days prior to dying, Vera told me and our children that an angel had visited her. She had gone through a tunnel that opened up into light. There, she had seen her deceased relatives, including her dad, brother, and grandmother. She pleaded with the angel to let her live, to be with our children. But the angel told her she could not live, and her time was near. She begged and pleaded. So he then showed her the future of our children and mine. Several of the things she told me were to come have actually come true. She was not allowed to share the details of my future and passing, but I inferred from her love. She shared the future of our children and things I must do, which right now I am doing. She pleaded so hard to live that the angel came back a second time and told her she would be allowed to live in between the here and there as an angel watching over our children. Ever since then, I have been traveling and telling this to whomever will listen, including the dying and clergy. I've shared it with Jewish rabbis, many Christian clergy of different denominations, as well as Catholics, Muslims, and you name it. Ever since that day, my life has been changed forever. <laughs>